What's the next thing we're going to need? I heard TV. That's the second thing. What's the third thing we're going to do? Yeah. What's that? We're going to have to go to nap, right? Nap is important. If we don't do a nap, what happens? <laughs> and then what's the last thing we're going to do? Strong coffee before the parents get out. Right. Get some coffee in us, get the kids up, and then maybe go outside and play. So this is exactly the plan that Stacy gave me. She's like, that's all you got to do, right? So feed the kid a snack. Her, little, her name was Ella, sweet little girl. Feed her a snack. Watch a show with her. Get her relaxed. Put her down for a nap. When she gets up, go out and play. Simple plan, right? What could go wrong? Everything. <laughs> well, so here's what I did. So I get her a little celery, I get her carrots, right? We've got some little rolled up ham and she's kind of snacking on it. I turn on the TV, but I didn't have any kids' movies, but I had surf videos. So I put on one of those, right? I'm like, this is pretty good. It's my favorite video, it's called Fluid Combustion. It's this movie about Hawaii, all these guys surfing in Hawaii. I go over to my fridge, I grab an ice cold beer, crack it open, and sit down right beside it. But now I'm kind of nervous, because I know that things, like, I'm, I'm, there's some things I must be forgetting. I'm nervous about this. But I'm sitting next to her, and she's kind of looking at me, and then she's looking at the TV, and then she's kind of watching the TV, and she's having a bite. All's good. Well, how many of you have ever watched a surf video? A few of us have, right? Now, in a surf video, if you're not a surfer, you really only notice a few things that the surfers actually do on the waves. The first one is when they get covered up, right? They get inside the tube, right? That's called getting barreled tubed in the green room. There's all kinds of stuff like that, right? All kinds of different names for it. The second thing is when they come up and they hit the lip, right? The lip is the breaking part of the wave. And to surfers, when we talk about hitting the lip, it makes a specific sound to us. It goes, it goes, schwack, right? We come up, we power off the bottom, we hit the lip, and schwack, right? So I'm sitting here with this little girl, and I figured I might teach her a little bit about surfing. So I show her, we're pumping down the line, we're pumping down the line, I look at her, and I go, watch this, watch this, sweetie, schwack. And she looks at me, and what do you think she does? She does the same thing right back. She goes, schwack. And I was like, this is cool, I like this little girl. So we watch it a little bit more, and then I go, schwack, and she goes, <laughs> and then again, I watch it happens again, and she goes, it's a special sound. Are there any special sounds like that, like the sounds of success in any other sports you can think of? Baseball. Like what? I heard baseball. Like, what's the sound? <laughs> yeah, it's like crack, right? It's that beautiful sound of when wood hits ball. And you can tell if it's going to be a home run right off the bat, can't you? Another sport like that. What's another one where you can hear the sound of success? Football. What's it sound like in basketball? It's a beautiful sound, right? Other sports. I heard horseback riding. How do you know what horse, who's horseback riding? Horse racing. What's the sound of success? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, right? We can hear it, we know it. Can you hear it on a call? Yep. Yes. Who says yes? <coughs> Who says no? Does it take any more than a few seconds to understand when you listen in on someone else's call if it's going to be a or if it's going to be like <laughs> you can tell, right? It only takes a few seconds. So let's take a quick look at a call and, and see what we think. Sound good? All right, here it goes. So in just a moment, you're going to be welcoming up a couple of your friends. One of the things we love to do at Dale Carnegie is we practice raging, roaring rounds of applause. What's a raging, roaring round of applause? No, no, that was a golf clap. A raging, roaring round of applause. Like, who's your, who's your favorite musician? Who's your favorite musician? Do you have a favorite one? John? Legend. John Legend. Nice. So when John takes the stage, what does it sound like? Applause. People go nuts, right? Like they go crazy. It's not like a... It's like... Woohoo! Right? 
So when your partners come up, when your friends, your colleagues come up here, let's practice that kind of a raging war round of applause. You okay with that? Yeah. yeah. All right. So please welcome up Corey Harrington <laughs> and Aaron. Let's go. Corey. Now, I'm going to be the dealer. Aaron, who are you going to be? I'll be the seller. He'll be, he'll be himself, right? So Aaron will be playing himself for the purposes of this call. Corey, who are you going to be? Like the coach, supervisor. Perfect. Sound good? Now, one of the things we love to do when we practice these calls, and I'll go up there with them, is that we turn back to back. Okay? So if we could just turn back to back like we were doing out there. Mm -hmm. Why are we going to do that? Because what? You can't see expression or posture. Clear, right? You can't see expression or posture over the phone. What can you do? Here. Listen. Here. Here. Listen. That's it. Right? So you've got to be able to tell by the sound whether it's going to go or schwack. So we're going to be looking for that. We're going to be observing in just a second. So, um, Aaron, tell us who we're going to be calling. We're going to call uh, Finance Department of Warren Kia in Arizona. Okay, the Financial Department of Foreign Kia in Arizona, just outside Phoenix. My name's going to be Kyler. What else do you know about me as Kyler? Did I get that name right or I screwed up? Yes. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Actually, I don't know too much about them because they're really hard to get a hold of. <laughs> know anyone like that? <laughs> <laughs> Happens from time to time. <laughs> All right. So why are they so hard to get a hold of? Don't they just, aren't they just sitting there waiting for a call from CPS? <laughs> Like We'd love it if they were, they're not, right? So you're going to call. Do you think you'll get them directly on the phone? Today, yes. Okay, today that's what's going to happen. So would you like to see how this is going to go? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, feel good about this? And then, Corey, what's your job going to be in all this? Uh, just to take notes and kind of critique his call. Okay, good with that? Now, when we do this ourselves in just a few minutes, the person who's playing coach will need to critique tough and they'll need to set it up so that it's just as real as the one we're about to practice. Corey's gonna do something else that's super important for us. If there's something that doesn't ring true, if there's something that we do that doesn't feel like a real call, he's gonna tell us, that's crap, that's, that's not a real call. Good with that? So one of you will be playing Corey's role, one of you, actually in each of you will be playing either Corey's role, my role, or his role. Sound good? Yeah. Okay, when you're ready. Aaron. Okay. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. This is Kyler. Born hey. Kia. Hey, Kyler. Aaron here at TPS. How, how are you doing today? I'm good. Good deal. Is it doing well for the month of December? It's hectic. How, why is it so hectic over there? Well, I mean, we're selling a lot of cars. That's a good thing at the end of the year, right? Perfect. Great thing. That's exactly why I'm calling you. We have a deal in for funding. I need to chase a couple steps from you. Want to get it funded so we can get you the money and then we can start building more business. That's what I want and I want it fast and furious. All right, perfect. So first thing, let me give you, um, let me give you my direct fax number so you can send me these two steps that I still need for this deal so we can get it funded. Fax? Yeah, or email. Okay, yeah, give me your email address. Okay, Aaron H, you have a pen handy? Yep, sure do. Aaron H at ConsumerPortfolio.com. Okay, Aaron H at Consumer Portfolio. What do you need for, from us specifically? I need a credit app and I need a title application. Okay, yeah, that's no problem. Actually, I have them right here in front of me on my screen because I've got the CRM here. So I've got them ready to go. Credit app, title app, anything else you need? No, nope, that's it right now. But after I get those faxes and get this deal funded, I want to talk to you about mailers. Okay, I'm going to send them to you right now. Could you just verify you've received them? Yes. Uh, just got them. Perfect. Let me upload these to the underwriter and let me send her a message and then I'll delve into a little more de detail about our mailer program. Okay, great. Well, you have a great day. Oh, why are you getting off the phone so quick? Uh, things are hectic. Oh, uh, can't be too hectic. We're just here to make you money, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. What All do right. you got? Well, I just want to make sure, I mean, we've only done one deal in the last year. So I'm just trying to figure out why. I'm here to make you money. I know you guys use Westlake and other subprime lenders that tender, but I know we can benefit you a bit more with revenue. We do. You know, actually, I mean, that's fair. I hear you. We've only done one with CPS. That's right. Um, we, um, you're kind of a, and, and also ran right now for us. So, you know, so sometimes we'll, you know, we'll send some stuff your way. Um, All right, are you picking and choosing what you're sending us? Of or, course. And 
how are you going to figure out a program if you're just picking and choosing them? Okay, and let's hit stop here. Let's give them a huge round of applause. <laughs> so, Corey, you first. What did you see? What was real? What did he do well? Uh, the things he did well was he did a great job at, um, at responding to the dealer when he said that things were hectic. It, it, it let the dealer know that he's like fully engaged in the conversation. He just didn't dance around that and start talking about something else. He went right into it. Why is it so hectic? If things are hectic, is it, is it good for us to dance around and try to figure out how their day is? No. No. Definitely not, right? Okay, what else? Uh, he did a great job at mentioning our mailers. Um, he also did a good job at mentioning that he knew who the dealer's other lenders were, like who he was in bed with, so to speak. Yeah, nice. So, so that's important too. Understanding that we are in a sea of competition, right? That they've got a lot of choices. It's super important to make that comment. What else? Um, one thing that I didn't like was that when the dealer said it was kind of hectic, uh, when the dealer is busy, you kind of want to let him off the hook because uh, he may not be fully engaged, and you and it, it might turn into where the dealer feels like you're kind of harassing him a little bit. Okay. Let's, let's take that one apart for just a second. Thanks very much for that. So if we've got a situation where things are kind of hectic for the dealer, who says we should try to crack into it a bit? Who says we should let him off the hook and schedule another appointment? What do you think? Let him off the hook? Crack into it a little bit. Okay. So maybe some, some mixed bag kind of depends on our sense of the call, right? right. So I, I think that's a great point. So we want to be tuning in that ear really carefully. We'll talk about that a lot over the next five days. Uh, we have five days together, I don't know if you knew that. But we'll, we'll tune that in quite a bit. And our ear and our instinct is going to tell us whether to go forward. Sound good? Mm -hmm. What's something else that you saw that you might tune up, Corey? Uh, well, two, one other thing that he did yeah. good was uh, when he asked the dealer, uh, why, how are you picking and choosing if you don't know what we buy? That was really good. Yeah, why did you like that? Because that gives him the opportunity to explain to the dealer exactly what we do at CPS. He did something else special. There was something else special about that question. Was it a yes or no question? No. Open-ended. It was what kind? Open-ended. Who knows the power of an open-ended question? What's the power of it? Let some talk. Suddenly, we're controlling the conversation as the person who's calling them. We're opening it up. We're letting them talk. And now is a really a real opportunity for us to listen and get a feel. Right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now from the group, so a couple of things that you saw well in this exercise for any of the three of us. First of all, as the person who was the dealer, what did I do that could have been improved? So I was Kyler, I was the dealer, what could have been improved about the way that I played that role? Could have been meaner and offered more profanity. <laughs> meaner and more profanity. Okay. So we're, we're going to save meaner and more profanity for day three. But we're, right? So for today, we're, we're going to be a little bit, a little bit kind, right? Um, as if maybe the person potentially likes us a little bit, but that's great. So we'll save that for day three. We'll get tougher and tougher. That's absolutely right. What's something else I could have done better as the dealer? Right, so, may, so like what kind of questions might I have asked? What you buy? Say that again? What our bank buys? Oh, so what types of loans you buy, right? What types of loans do you buy, right? What are your, what are your thresholds? That's a great one, right? Because maybe I wouldn't remember exactly what CPS does. What's something else I could have done better? Complained. <laughs> nice, <laughs> throwing a complaint there. When he, yeah, when he said, you've only funded one deal, a dealer would have said, you guys don't buy anything. That's what they would say. So. Right. so I think being direct, sometimes throwing in some of those complaints, calling it like it is. When somebody's on the phone with you, it's different than when you're face to face. It's, I would say, and you may agree or disagree, but I would say it's harder to be mean and tough with somebody when you're face to face with them. Right? You don't think so? I, do you think it's harder when you're face to face or harder on the phone? I should have used a, used a better word. That's a great point. It's I, I would I would argue that it's harder to be unreasonable with someone when you're face to face with them. Right? <coughs> so fair enough. Okay, then let's talk about these two folks. So first, what's something that Aaron did that was awesome? Go for it. I think you did a really good job at mirroring the dealer's attitude. Um, because when he started the call, you were very short, and he didn't dance around it. Like he said. Wow. Mirroring is huge. What's mirroring, Aaron? Just kind of observing and just running with it. Meeting him where he's at, right? Observing and running with it. That's such a huge point. We're going to talk about mirroring a ton. 
Now, is mirroring the same as imitating or copying? No. How is it different? Well, you're not like reflecting back exactly what they're saying. You're just, if they're talking slow, you're slowing down what you're saying. If they're in a hurry, you're matching their pace, their tone, their level of excitement without parroting what they're saying. Perfectly said, right? We're, we're adjusting our pacing, our level of enthusiasm, all those things to kind of suit the situation, okay? We're gonna come back to mirroring, so let's definitely think about that. And then let's talk about what, um, first name again was Corey. Corey. Sorry about that, Corey. Yeah, now, right. now it'll stick, hopefully. So Corey, um, what did Corey do particularly well? I mean, I thought he was just listening to the call. <laughs> he was capturing everything what he was talking to the dealer out. So he's listening, he's capturing, and he's thinking about what could be done better and what's going well. Is it important for him to say to the group, what's going well? Yes. Why? Positive reinforcement. <laughs> we, do, we need that positive reinforcement, right? If you're on the phone all day, most of what you get is no. At least that's my experience, right? So nice to have some positive reinforcement in this room, in this, in this business, right? This is a time to give some good, solid, positive reinforcement to each other, and then maybe one or two things to adjust. Sound good? Let's give Corey and Aaron one more huge round of applause. So in a moment, we're going to be trying this ourselves in groups of three. Before we do that, what I would ask you to do is open your binder to the very, very first page. I think get a binder. Didn't get a binder. Are we short? Do we have an extra one back there, Steve? <laughs> so it's nice when you sell out. This, this completely sold out, right? So we have more folks than we expected, which we really, really could not be happier about that. And we tremendously appreciate all of you coming. Uh, but what that does mean is that a couple of you may get printed binders rather than coiled binders. Um, we'll do a better count for you next time. Uh, but on the inside here, please take a look on this inside front page and write down, it's just a big blank page, write down two or three things you learned from this call right here. One of the first ones you should write down is mirroring. How are we doing back here? Our group? The group in Vegas? Hey, Vegas! Good to see you folks. <laughs> you probably have their call on mute. Because uh, sometimes it, the slightest little sound will make you guys mute, then we can hear what's going on. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Thank you. We'll make sure we keep you involved. And if we don't, please do something like wave crazily or something back there so we know to wrap you back in. Okay? Yeah. So write down two or three lessons learned from that exercise. Mirroring is one. Another idea might be ask a great open-ended question. Let me ask everyone a question. Was he smiling? Okay, should he be? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Because they can hear the smile in their voice, right? Put that down. Anyone not have a pen? Yeah. There's some extra pens over there. Got extra pens? Yeah. <laughs> pens? In a moment, in a moment you're going to stand up, you're going to find two people who you don't know very well, and that's going to be your group. One of you, whoever is the most experienced in cold calling or the most experienced on the phone, is going to be the, is going to be the seller. They're going to be CTS. The other one, if there's someone who's a manager or a supervisor in the group, that person's going to be the coach for this call. Don't worry, we're going to switch that role around a lot over the next five days. But if you're, whoever has the most experience in terms of managing or coaching other folks is going to be the coach. And then the person who's newest to the company is going to be, oh, you know what, let's throw, let's throw them a wrench. The person who's newest to the company is actually going to be CPS, and they're going to be selling. 
The person who's most experienced in the group is going to be the coach, but the person who's got the most phone time, that's going to be the buyer. Sound good? That'll be the team. Good or not? <coughs> Coaches, your job is to set up the exercise and make sure it flows. And just like we said with Corey, your job is to make sure it's real. Right? If they're not taking it seriously, if it's a little bit of BS, it's your opportunity to jump in and say, stop. This is how it would really go. Sound good? Before we do that, why do you think we're doing this? Break the ice. Interaction. What's that? Break the ice interaction. We're, we're going to break the ice. It's some interaction. What do you think is the biggest reason that we're doing this? <clears throat> Make us better at what? Our job. What part of our jobs? <laughs> Which is what, like, in terms of prioritization in our jobs, what part of our, how, where, does, where should this go? Oh, this no. is first, right? I mean, after being an ethical, honest, good person, right? This is it, right? This is where the rubber meets the road. This is your revenue generating activity. This is how we get paid, right? So we better be how good at it? Very good. <laughs> extremely, extremely. That's what we're about to see. Any questions before we stand up to practice? Who has the first question? You'll find two people you don't know very well. You'll partner with them. You'll quickly figure out each other's names, who has the most experience, who's the manager. You'll assign the rules. Once you've done that, once you're with your group, you'll stop. You won't make the call yet. You'll just wait for more instruction. Good? And I would ask everyone in the room to do one of these. Everyone in the room. So if you're, if you're a manager, if you're a supervisor, please jump in and mix in with this group and play one of those roles. Sound good? Okay, so go ahead and find your groups now. Exchange names and wait for further instruction. Well, wait till everybody gets through to see who wants it. Everybody in the room.